Great. Good morning and welcome, everybody, uh, to the A chord session. Today, we're going to talk about analytics for chord. I am Bora Eliacic, and I am the uh, lead for the A chord efforts within uh, ONF. So, uh, today, we're going to talk about, uh, as I said, analytics chord, and we're going to touch a bit uh, to its functionality, what it's doing. And then we're going to move into its architecture uh, a little bit deeper. And then uh, I'll tell, well, chord actually, A chord uh, fits in the overall uh, chord architecture and picture. And uh, at the second half of this uh, session, uh, we will have two demos uh, from the POC works we have done uh, for open config, Grafana, and uh, P4 in band telemetry use case, as well as a uh, POC demo of, uh, of the DCAE uh, of ONAP uh, integration with the VES uh, event stream. So uh, let me jump into the uh, talk. And uh, actually, as all of you know, uh, Accord stands for Central Office Rearchitected as Data Center, and Accord is no exception. Accord, as well, is, resides within the context of, of a data center. And Accord uh, is not like the other chord flavors you have been hearing uh, during this uh, show. Um, we have R chord for residential chord, M chord for mobile chord, and E chord for enterprise chord. And all of them depicts and work and realizes uh, some end user use cases. Whereas chord, A chord is a bit different than them, uh, is a part of the core platform, and uh, it actually touches and serves R chord, A chord, E chord all together along with the rest of the chord the whole court uh, platform and uh, environment. So uh, a court actually sits at the heart of a closed loop uh, cycle. And this cycle actually formed of three main uh, uh, functionalities. First of all, the telemetry component, which actually is the collector for data, uh, is the heart of a court. And it actually collects data from the chord environment and it publishes it towards its southbound interfaces uh, for applications who want to use that data uh, in, in their scenarios. And those applications are typically doing analytics, uh, but sometimes they are simply monitoring applications that just present the collected raw data and tells you about what's going on in the network, as well as uh, some further business intelligence type of uh, work they are doing, and uh, they extract a meaningful information out of the raw data and display that. And sometimes it is a machine learning or AI-based stuff uh, that actually comes up sometimes with decisions uh, to alter the way the whole platform is working. So when they come up with a decision, they actually goes to the control functionality, which actually is the XOS for the core environment. And it tells about the desired status or desired action. And core it then executes that actions and uh, ensures and makes sure that the core environment works as expected. So let's have a closer look than uh, what a chord is collecting as data. This picture down in here, I hope everybody can see. Uh, you have the, let's say, the infrastructure uh, part of the chord. And on top, you see the telemetry as a service, which is the monitoring as a service. We, we are using it interchangeably. And, uh, and on top of it, there are analytic engines and the uh, all sorts of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, telemetry applications sits here and talks to the XOS, as I said earlier. And telemetry as a service collects data through programmable probes, which are depicted here with uh, these yellow spots. 
And these probes are actually collecting data uh, from the fabric switches, uh, whether it's a in and out packet counts kind of stuff, or uh, that may be a signaling information that is being flowing on a link of, of a cloud for, for an EPC setting for, for MCOR, for instance. Or else, uh, telemetry as a service will collect data from the NFVI, where you will have your uh, compute and storage nodes and everything uh, will share their CPU usage, memory usage, disk space data, and so on and so forth. And not only the uh, basic uh, VNF, I mean, sorry, uh, VM stuff, uh, but also uh, VNF information, depending on their own context, is actually collected through the probes and uh, fed into the telemetry service. Not limited to those software components, actually, there are probes for also hardware components of Cord, and uh, we're going to touch that uh, an example in a, in a moment. So once those are collected by the telemetry service at the heart, uh, they are then stored in a uh, time series database for future use, and they are made available on the southbound interface through publish, subscribe type of uh, interfaces uh, for the applications to, to collect the observed data and use. And the applications also has a chance to uh, change the data set uh, of the observed data in real time. So they can, at any time, come back to the telemetry service and may ask for other kind of uh, extra data that may result in spinning off or turning on uh, extra probes uh, within the core infrastructure. Uh, and then if they come up with a decision uh, of an action, they go to XOS and XOS implement that, as I said earlier. So let's consider this scenario. Let's have a uh, fictitious uh, VNF that gone out of control and creating an unnecessary uh, high load of traffic in the east-west direction, and uh, that is killing down the uh, overall court performance. And let's imagine a security application up there having actually initially set up a very limited set of probes uh, that is not too much for it to consume, and that is not too much uh, for the whole platform to, to uh, carry on, uh, but all of a sudden, that application noticed an unexpected activity on the fabric cloud uh, and want to dig more to find out the root cause of, of that unexpected traffic. It goes to the telemetry service and uh, asks for turning on all the VNF uh, traffic probes so that it will detect the faulty VNF. And then after that is detected, it will go to XOS and tell XOS to take that VNF down, and uh, everything is, will then turn to normal. So this is just one situation, one, one example of a uh, closed loop scenario. There can be many other closed loop scenarios. Uh, possibilities are endless, uh, but bear in mind that if we are going to follow this path all the time, uh, it will actually be subject to some, some delays, some latencies. So uh, due to that latency, uh, not all the time-critic uh, use cases can be handled by this architecture. So that's why we are going to move to a multi-layer collector architecture with multi-layer closed loop which I'm going to touch uh, in a moment. <clears throat> but before that, let's have a closer look to how, how the architecture is working. So for, for a data to be collected from a target, let's say we have a fabric white box in here down there, uh, we have to have some probe agents that will actually collect the data from within the box and then feed it up to the telemetry as a service component of CORD, 
uh, that will be actually counterparted with a plugin in the uh, A chord part. That plugin is responsible of extracting that data and feed it into the data collection of A chord. Uh, today, at A chord, unfortunately, the data that is being transfer transferred uh, is unstructured. And uh, so we need those uh, plugins to do the uh, to apply uh, formatting to, uh, to the data that is actually exchanged. Uh, but in the roadmap, I'm going to touch, uh, we are going to move from unstructured to structured. And we are actually investigating uh, open config for that, VES data models for that, and Etsy for that. And uh, we're going to align with them so that we make sure uh, the data will be structured again. And uh, similar to this, uh, there is a work in progress for P4 in-band telemetry for the fabric switches uh, <clears throat> analytics. And, uh, and it will be actually, we hope to have it uh, showcased in like a few months. Uh, the other source of uh, data will be the, as I said, uh, servers and compute nodes and uh, storage nodes, as well as VNFs all having their own plugins for the telemetry service, uh, collecting the metrics that are listed here. And the full list of metrics uh, will be, uh, is available on the, on the wiki if you want to go and check. So um, with that, let me go to the roadmap. And um, as you know, uh, Code 4.0 is just uh, recently released, and uh, 4.1 is about to be released. So our first goal is to move everything that is done for A Core to Code 4.1 and uh, complete that, and integrate P4 in-band telemetry uh, with the A Core. And uh, we are working closely with the P4 Brigade. Uh, on this issue, and integrate A chord with ONAP DCAE. <clears throat> that will also include the VNF onboarding implications. Uh, and as I said, move from unstructured to structured telemetry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Telemetry and uh, combining data sets, data models from OpenConfig, VES, and Etsy. Uh, and we will create a hierarchical multi-collector architecture with dynamic collector and probe instantiations and um, programmable software-defined collectors for which Tom Toffy of at and will have a uh, session this afternoon at 3 p.m. in this very room. Uh, and we're going to discuss this in detail, its architecture, its possibilities. And uh, we would love to have you here back then. And, and we will actually uh, develop SDKs in the roadmap for those software-defined collectors to be easily uh, developed and delivered. Uh, and same applies for the uh, V-probes. Having said that, <clears throat> what we mean by hierarchical uh, multi-layer loops? So uh, let's have a look here. Actually, this is what we have in place. The a chord main collector that collects data from the infrastructure, VNFs, and uh, data or signaling anywhere else. So, and there is an application on top of it that closed the loop. But as I said, this is a long way to travel, and the delay budget for some use cases cannot handle this. So what we do, we are actually defining a, um, <clears throat> a generic API around the, the collector of a chord so that we can implement collectors elsewhere down in the uh, infrastructure. That means we can have collectors at the white, white box switch, as well as we can have a collector at down in the uh, <clears throat> chipset uh, like P4 uh, kind of stuff. So this way, 
the packet will travel a very short way. And instead of going a long way, uh, the, the applications that will bind on a very nearby that collector within the same host, actually, within the same switch, uh, will create a very uh, quick loopback and uh, this will give us the opportunity to realize uh, use cases like software, um, self-organized network, self-driving network uh, kind of stuff that will actually be very sub-millisecond uh, round trip. So uh, with that, this will be the afternoon session topic, uh, the SD collectors. And these SD collectors is going to program the probes at each layer of the uh, probes and uh, will feed data to AI so that self-driving networks can be achieved. And let's proceed for uh, the demos right now. And uh, let me uh, welcome on stage Song Yu from Mariner and Sarkhan Tuldaria from Netsia for their demo. So hello, hello everyone. My name is Song Yu I'm from uh, Marina Sona 4. Uh, Marina is a, a service assurance company based in Canada. Uh, we have clients across the globe and uh, currently we launch a new division called Sona 4, which focus on network, uh, edge network analytics. And uh, so we are working in a core team. So today we're going to show you guys uh, uh, demo I did for the SD collector with GMI interface. So before I talk about our demo, I'll just give you a little bit uh, explanation about P4 inbound telemetry since I'm going to use this data model as the example. Uh, so P4 inbound telemetry is uh, telemetry information we collected from the data plan uh, from the network element. So, so when we have packet flow from uh, the uh, source to the destination, we're going to use through, uh, passing through a lot of different network elements, like switches. So in each, each switches, uh, we're going to insert some telemetry information, like the uh, packet loss, latency, about the ingress, egress, and also some network state about the queue buffering stuff. So, and then we go to switch two, also insert uh, the telemetry information of switch two, switch five, so all, the, all the way to switch six. So we can actually connect, collect the telemetry information from the switch six and to, to uh, use uh, by our analytics app. So this is how our SD, multi-layer SD collector works in this model. So since we can collect all the information from the switches, so we can just simply hook up our SD collector uh, into the switch and get all the telemetry information to our analytics app. So we, we can have uh, our SD collectors uh, hook up, set up here, and, uh, th uh, and also it's a multi-layer collectors. So in each layer collector, we are going to do some uh, buffering ag aggregation and the report, report telemetry uh, in different times uh, frequency to the upper level uh, collectors. So for example, we can uh, aggregation uh, report data from L0 collector, maybe in sub-seconds, report to the L1 and to L2, and all the way to the analytics app. And also, sometimes if we have some network problem, we want to, uh, 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 well, we want to get some high-frequency uh, time to information in order to debug the problem, we can simply hook up our apps to the low-level collector to get the high-frequency High resolution time tree information data, probably in sub seconds here. And also, actually, we can hook up our app to any layer of collectors to, based on your requirements. So now I'm going to talk about the setup of the demo. So for the demo, we have a P4 inbound time tree probe. It's actually just a probe to simulate some uh, P4 time tree uh, uh, data model. And, uh, and then we have some collectors. And those collectors will do some aggregation buffering. 
and then we have our analytics app. So, so at the beginning we can trigger the subscription from our app to the to one of the collector, for example, to L0 collector, and we pass the subscription to the probe, and then we're going to uh, start the streaming of the time tree all the way to the app, and also we can visualize it from the Grafana. And then we, if we want to do more aggregation, so we can hook up our app to L1 collector, and then L1 pass the subscription to L0 to the pro, and we got the uh, streaming time tree back to the app. So we are going to do more sub, uh, aggregation in these two collectors. So for example, this may be uh, report data every one or 0.1 seconds, and this one may be report data in 10 seconds. So now let's jump into the demo. So in the left side, we have our probe, we have the collectors, we have collectors, and uh, we have uh, our analytics app. And in the right side, we have Grafana with some uh, metrics dashboard loaded here. So at the beginning, we can start our probe to simulate some uh, P4 inbound time tree data. And now we can start one of the collector. So this one will, will uh, subscribe to the probe and uh, report the data in every 0.1 seconds. So now let's start our app. So our app will subscribe to to this collector, which is running in 7001, and subscribe to P4int. So now we can see the uh, time tree information is streaming from the probe to the, to the collector, to the app, and we can see the metrics data is coming to the Grafana. So you can see we can monitor the package drop count for different switch, uh, ingress or egress, or different ports, and also we can monitor port, uh, port utilization and uh, also the buffer, the queue length and congestion status. So, so now if we want uh, more aggregation, so we can simply just add a So we can simply add another collector. Let's say we want the, this collector to be L1 collector to sub, subscribe to the L0 collector to this collector. So it's subscribing to 7001 is this collector and uh, reporting data in every five seconds. So now we start another subscription from the app subscribe into L1 collector. Now you can see the data is also start uh, streaming from the probe and then to the L0 collector and then L0 collector reporting data to L1 collector and then to our app. So actually here we have another layer of collector do more aggregation. And now I start to see some new data come into the Grafana. And also we are going to have less uh, resolution of the time tree, but more aggregated. And also, since our probe is also uh, using GMI interface, like, like all the collectors using the same interface, we can also simply hook up the, our app 
directly to the to the probe to get the raw day, raw telemetry telemetry information without any aggregation. The data is just some random data, so don't be surprised if it does make sense to you. Yeah, that's pretty much about my demo. So I pass to you, Socket. Thank you, Song. Yes. And hi, my name is Sarkant. I work for Netsia. Uh, today I will give you a simple demo uh, of the VES. VES is a, a project which is under uh, OPNF initiative and it's uh, it's the uh, VNF event stream uh, and right now it is a part of uh, ONAP DCAE project uh, and VES is runs under the uh, DCAE. So uh, simply VES uh, simply collects the events and Sorry. Uh, we simply collects events and measurements data from the VNS uh, by using a VES agent and West collector in the uh, ONAP DCAE uh, puts the events and measurements data to the uh, DMAP message bus and you can subscribe that measurement data and do some analytics using that data and also you can push that data uh, to other applications if you want. Uh, in my demo, uh, we just deployed the VS collector and the DMAP. DMAP, by the way, which is a component uh, of developed by at and and in my demo, uh, we, we, we uh, deployed the VS collector and the DMAP message router, and we'll have a, a simulator to send the uh, VNF events to the VS collector, and we'll subscribe to the DMAP message bus to collect the events. Uh, unfortunately, I will go through a video because of uh, some technical issues. Here you can see uh, the deploy, deployed uh, Docker images. We have uh, DMAP and the Kafka and Zookeeper and the VS collector. We can continue. So uh, we will subscribe to the uh, topic, which is a syslog uh, output topic in there. And now we will simulate the uh, VNF events. Now our agent sending the events to the VS collector and uh, the subscriber in there collects the event from the data, bu the data bus. And also, there are other topics there. We can subscribe any of them. And now we are going to subscribe to the uh, mobile flow, I think. Yeah. And also getting the events from that topic also. Thanks, that's it from me. Thank you very much, Song and Sarkant. Uh, these guys did a great job, really. Uh, actually, in the first demo, uh, Song uh, actually uh, wrote a data collector uh, for OpenConfig and integrated it uh, with another component he wrote uh, that will generate synthetic data but not in a, you know, just, just any data, but uh, in a fashion that is like uh, similar to what 
P4 in-band telemetry data will be produced. So we made sure that that, that collector actually can consume and process uh, P4 in-band telemetry data. And he has gone the extra mile to integrate it with Grafana and uh, made it actually uh, visual uh, on uh, Grafana screens. As well, uh, Sarkant actually did install the, the huge DCAE. He carved out a small component of it, installed it in that laptop, and ran it over there and integrated it with all the rest of this uh, platform. But unfortunately, they had to go through that through a video because that requires a lot of resources that this laptop couldn't uh, actually afford. So uh, thanks again for their efforts. And this is time for some questions. If you may have, we will be glad to address them. Yes, please. Hi there, you mentioned some use cases um, for closed loop that had low latency um, SON and self-driving cars. Have you captured a list of more of those and what some of those requirements might be? Well, uh, actually this is a uh, work in progress, so we did not implement it. So we are now in the phase of uh, architecting it. And uh, the very demo you have seen uh, about the open config and multi-layer uh, collectors uh, were all POCs. So uh, there is unfortunately nothing in place uh, that is already implemented, uh, but uh, we can speculate uh, a few more uh, use cases uh, for, you know, for traffic management, for instance, you know, as I told, uh, we are also working on integrating uh, P4 in-band telemetry that will actually carry out a very, very valuable information uh, about latencies at least, or queue sizes uh, in the switches uh, in the fabric uh, that we can analyze and react on it uh, very quickly uh, so that we ensure uh, a smooth, well-balanced net, uh, network uh, traffic on, on the fabric. This could be one uh, that, that just came up to my mind, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there could be many, many other uh, uh, use cases, and you're welcome to join me <laughs> and help me with that. Yes, please. Uh, you mentioned about the AIML thing, right? So uh, what's your uh, strategy around, uh, have you explored any of those AIML deep learning techniques which are relevant for this uh, Discord, ACORD? architecture and, and are you finding them like uh, the decisions are really optimized based on those deep learning techniques so uh, very good great question uh, we don't have uh, anything in place right now but uh, we actually are talking to a few uh, contributors uh, for their uh, technologies and uh, I believe soon uh, we will have uh, Tom. Can can you help me uh, remember? The, the question was about uh, the AI use cases, and uh, so uh, we we actually are are looking for contributors uh, in that area. Uh, we are already talking to a few. Yeah. Exactly. Also, yeah, there, there are some thoughts around Acumos, uh, which was recently announced by at and uh, so that, that's what, where we are. Yeah. Just a question, some, uh, you know, our concern, uh, oh yeah, this is Tianji from uh, China Mobile. Uh, actually, this is something we are looking at. Uh, the demo is impressive. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, the thing is like uh, when we look at the network, we are not looking at any single or individual narrow elements. And then the pod utilization, bandwidth utilization, spew, high or low, from a single network element, uh, from provider point of view, we have all the tools, everything is there already. And what we are uh, very interested in looking at this time is for data analytics from a holistic view. 
by looking at you have a bunch of uh, network elements. Maybe you have mentioned about uh, the ML or AI, those type of things. Basically, we want to have some mechanism to collect the data status up among all the network elements within some uh, uh, autonomous domain or um, you know some um, you know boundary such that when the uh, the final like uh, the DCA term of view like uh, in the service module when it's doing the analysis uh, it can give a, a holistic view say okay I can give you an example some routing protocol got in some loop and then from all the network elements or not all maybe some of them will give you some uh, assist logs or some events so we want to find the, the intelligent way to coordinate all the events within some time frame or very short period to say, okay, we have we are having problem in the network, and then we can uh, start to control the closed loop. So that is the thing. Uh, that uh, demo is very interesting. It's impressive, but you know we want to go to see whether there's something more. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, encouraging words and uh, your comments. Thank you. We would love to, yeah. And yeah, I mean, we're, we're uh, holding weekly meetings, you know, every Monday, 9.30 a.m. Uh, local time. And uh, please join us. Any other questions? Yes, please. So you are talking about this uh, multi-level uh, collection of data. So is there a mechanism that you have today to correlate this data? That is number one. And uh, what about the KPI? So uh, are they also the affecting some KPIs and based on that you are taking an addition today? So. Okay, thanks. A very good question. Uh, so correlation actually is, uh, we'll follow. Uh, we first need to move from the unstructured data collection to structured data collection and that structured data. And then in turn, uh, we'll have a meaningful, you know, uh, content for, for a core uh, to, to look at. And then uh, co uh, correlation will take place uh, as a second step forward. And uh, what was your second part of your question? The KPIs, again, I mean, uh, once we will have the, uh, the data models uh, for the collected data, KPIs will be built on top of them. And uh, so it's, yeah, just, we are about to be there, though. Different. I mean, yeah, yeah, everybody is going to have their set of KPIs defined. And of course, uh, Accord will have its own uh, within its context, but uh, mostly the uh, analytics applications uh, will be mostly dealing with the KPIs. Right, thanks. So the question is, um, you know, key performance indicators that really define a service, a QoS aspects, or, you know, depending on application, of course. Can we, depending on, because we don't know what the right KPIs are as we move forward, emerging applications and so on. Is there any way to think about programming the KPIs? You know, can we utilize or these collectors at different levels to say, this application is looking for this kind of KPIs for this service at this time of the day, and maybe different type of KPIs at different time of day. Can we program the collectors to provide dynamic KPIs? You know, and that's something that might be of interest if you guys can help with that. Yeah, there are some, some I mean, though I'm not an AI ML expert, but see, you have a service and you know the performance that what is the expectation from that service. And then you have all the metrics, the telemetry information. So using those techniques, the deep learning, you can definitely extract features, extract or classify them, cluster them, and then make sure that, okay, so these are the indicators which are impacting the performance like, and then generate the whatever features or whatever key performance indicator rather than taking a, a sort of a whole gamut of things rather than you have to localize into into few few of those indicators. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. 
Right. So, Arisent is uh, we are part of the Arisent team. So, uh, Arisent is developing something called a semantic telemetry, which can get into those switches and routers. And exactly what you are saying, right? The the required KPIs. For example, a VNF is onboarded, and as part of the onboarding, it has a, a VNF descriptor which says that these are the KPIs that it is interested in. So these KPIs, the application can take in, uh, or the monitoring application, and then it can ask those routers and switches with this semantic telemetry that these are the only KPIs you send me, rather than flooding. Yeah, so. Sure. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And uh, so more questions? I think, I mean, very uh, exciting talk is going on. So. I'll be happy if there will be more. Okay. So thank you very much for joining.